Hi, my name is Natalia, and I'm from um, Novosibirsk, Russia. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Here we go. See, this is it. And Moscow is all the way down there. And Nizhny Novgorod is here. Okay, that's for those who travel there. Um, well, I'm the only child, and um, this is my mom and her parents, grandpa and grandma. Um, my mom, she was considered to be an old maid at age 24, so she was forced to marry. And she married an alcoholic because, unfortunately, most of Russian men are alcoholics. Um, and, um, well, that's it. My mother and father divorced soon after I was born because she didn't want me to um, suffer from wrong decisions that my father took. And um, my father died when I was seven. I actually saw him twice in my life. And uh, the first time I saw him when I was six, and um, he just came came over. I don't know why. My mom asked me to go back from um, like my friends, and then she baked some pies and gave me a cup of milk, and then she goes eat. So I felt very uncomfortable eating because he was staring at me and he was a stranger. I never asked my mom anything about my dad because for, for a reason I knew it would hurt her. And when this man left, uh, my mom, she told me that this is your father. For, I still don't know what it, what it means to have a father. And for me, those words were like empty sounds. So I, I couldn't really apply this to me. And uh, one day when I was seven, I came back from work, uh, I'm sorry, from school, and then I was doing my homework. And uh, my mom knelt down at my knees, and then she goes, your father died. And I felt bad because I didn't feel anything, because I actually, my father was never part of my life. And I, again, couldn't understand what it means when he dies. But um, the point is, Later, when I was 14, I learned that when, for, this short, the, for this short period of time that my parents were married, he was abusing her. And even when she got pregnant to the point when he beat her severely, um, even when I was in her womb. And this is so horrible. And the first time in my life, and it was the last time in my life, well, I don't know if it happens again, hopefully not. I had hated a person, like, really, really much because I wanted to defend my mother and because I knew how much she puts in me to raise me. And this is not an easy thing to do in Russia, and I will tell you why just in a while. So um, by that time, he was dead, and I sort of praised God that he is dead because, I, I honestly, I think I would commit, you know, a murder. But uh, later, two years ago, so... When I was 22, I was told by my mom that actually my father, he raped a girl and he was put into jail and then he committed suicide. And I was very, very shocked. Um, but at the point, the reason why I'm telling you this story, when I got to know Jesus, and I will tell you more later, the cornerstone of my baptism and um, believing that God is a loving God was that I could not forgive my father. And I couldn't be, um, you know, there's like hot, warm, and cold. So, you know, I couldn't be warm. I was very, very emotional because, you know, for what he did to my mom. Anyway, that's me. Um, that's three months old. And this is a typical Russian picture of a baby uh, with the bear, I guess. I still have it, and it's really old. I used to give him some sodas. <laughs> so it, it smells now. But, um, and this is I'm um, three, and every Russian Soviet Union child goes to kindergarten. Um, and then this is a very great thing to do. Um, it's my graduation from school, and um, we are supposed to wear this kind of dress when you know we're 
say goodbye to school. So that was one of the most happiest days because I realized I will never um, take a Russian exam anymore. And I was wrong. <laughs> um, this is, speaking about Russia, this is exciting. The first cultural shock that I have ever had in my life about America is that you, like all of you drive cars. In Russia, it's not happening. I mean, for some people, it does, but not for majority. So I took this kind of bus. I took a train and a bus to go to my university. And then um, for two years when I graduated, I used you know, this bus to go pretty much anywhere I want to. And the thing about this Russian bus is that when you get in, you have to forget about your personal space, private space. And even forget about the smell preferences because <laughs> people smell bad in Russia. This is true. I don't know why I don't, but I don't know why the rest of them do. Um, anyway, this is quite an adventure. So if you ever go to Russia, and it doesn't matter, Moscow or any other Russian city, try it. Okay? You will, you will you'll have fun. Yeah. Right. This is um, actually the most important sightseeing in Novosibirsk. This is the biggest opera house in Russia. Um, to tell you a secret, the reason why it's big, it's really huge. You cannot see people there because they're so miserable. But um, the same amount of, how do you call that? You see, it's huge, but the same thing happens ha <laughs> underneath the ground is pretty much the same building. The reason why they built it, it was before the Second World War, and there are some weapons, you know, and stuff going on, just in case if they reached Siberia. So I, I guess we would fight back or something. And this is a railway station. Um, it's bigger than SEPTA, much bigger. Um, have you ever heard about Trans-Siberian uh, Railway? So this is the middle, like, uh, middle part of it. Uh, this is a typical Russian house, well, not house, building. Um, about half uh, live in housing projects, and they are very, very tiny. Probably if you think about your living room, this is, in Russia, it's a living room, bathroom, and toilet all together. So it's like very, very small. But even those who, and it's expensive too, so not everyone can afford it. The other half lives in villages, so it's not really good thing to live in the village. My mom took her grandparents out of village and put them, um, made them move to the town, uh, because to live in villages was, you know, very good thing in Soviet Union times. You had everything. You had land, and then the government bought um, the crops you harvested, like every. Was it a couple of times a year, and people were very, very um, rich in terms of they had um, milk and eggs, and they had uh, meat, chicken. They had um, they could grow wheat and make bread. So that was one. It was a privileged place to live. I would put it that way. If you are hardworking, but now because Soviet Union has gone. See what happens to like local villages. And believe me, that this house is really, really cold in winter. Because there are wall, like holes, and usually um, in windows there are little, little, um, thank you, cracks, cracks. And uh, it doesn't matter how much.